Welcome to another Will I Buy It, Buy or Skip video. We're gonna be talking about new makeup releases. I'm even gonna be talking about some new good treats for their fall winter update. So let's get into it. All right, we're starting with the regular programming and then lastly, I'm gonna talk about the good treats. All right, first, oh wait, I have to move. All right, first up, we have the new Balm and Cute collection. It says here at Beauty Creations Cosmetics. Huh? I thought this was Too Faced. I was sure this was Too Faced. Doesn't this look like Too Faced? Is, it, is this supposed to be a dupe? What is going on here? Please calm down, sir. Please. I'm trying to film here. All right. So these are a scented lip balm that gives the lips a natural flush of color with a light tint, buttery texture and a sheer finish, long lasting nourishment enriched with sunflower seed oil, peptides and shea butter, $6 each. Where I can get these in the Netherlands, these are gonna be probably about around 10 euros. These look like a Too Faced dupe, don't they? I am kind of curious to see how these will look on the lips. Like how light is this tint? I thought this was Too Faced. I'm still a little confused. I'm still a little like, now I don't know what to think. Will I pick this up? This is this is the type of item that I shouldn't buy on my low buy. Like I'm trying to stick a little bit more to the core of my channel, the core brand. This isn't a core brand. I am gonna see when these are gonna launch at Boozy Shop and how much of these are gonna be. I don't know. I kind of want to know. I kind of want to know how pigmented these are. I kind of want to see one person say something about them. And then we have the new Pillow Soft Hydrating Lip in Cheek Stain by Dominique Cosmetics. A long lasting flush of color that leaves your skin feeling soft and smooth. Infused with avocado oil to nourish the skin and formulated with hyaluronic acid to leave skin feeling softer, smoother and more hydrated than ever. We have Plushy Fuchsia, Hot Pink and Tangerine Dreams, a vibrant orange. I'm not really interested in this. I feel like when it comes to kind of like chain type products, I have a lot of faith in K-beauty brands and maybe not a lot in like Western brands. Maybe that's a bias that I shouldn't have. Maybe I am saying this while I shouldn't. Like maybe it's not really fair, but I just have a feeling like I don't really need this. I don't really need to try it. I have things from K-beauty and I'm fine with that. Then we have these new always on mood board eyeshadow palettes by Smashbox. So they used to have these cover shot eyeshadow palettes and up until last year, I actually had two cover shot eyeshadow palettes in my collection and I quite liked them. They were not bad. I understand that not all of the cover shot palettes were good and they were by far not indie quality, but I quite enjoyed them for the time that I had them. But apparently they are doing something new now. I don't know if the cover shot palettes are gonna be out of their collection. We have four new eyeshadow palettes. We have a neutral one, kind of like purpley burgundy one, a warm nude one, and then one that has kind of like a pop of line, it seems. I'm probably gonna watch some reviews. I don't know if it makes a lot of sense, for me to buy this but i kind of feel like is smashbox going into the right direction like is smashbox kind of getting interesting i feel like a lot of people were really into their new face palettes that i haven't tried but a lot of people were into those and now they have these new eyeshadow palettes i feel like maybe they're making a little bit like a sort of a comeback let me know if you agree with that but i feel like it's better it's looking better i'm not like flabbergasted yet i'm not ready to buy anything yet but it's looking like relatively good then we have the new nimia the brr brr cooling face mask there's a four pack for 18 dollars it's a mask to lift and plump your face while locking in ultra hydration flawless makeup starts with well prepped healthy skin so i think the price is not terrible like it's for $50 per mask but I wouldn't really personally spend a lot of money on sheet masks like I recently bought some of the Hema Hema is like I don't even know what to compare it with but they are a store they have a lot of different things they have skincare they have clothes they have toys they have so many different things candles food iced coffee but they had this sheet mask on sale for like one euro and that is kind of like what i want to pay for a mask their usual price 
the hay my usual price is also like three four euros so it's not that far off like i think that this is a fine price but i don't know if this is really gonna be like i'm not gonna buy this what am i saying i'm not gonna buy this maybe if someone says it's the best thing they've ever used in their life but usually when i say something like that in these videos nobody ends up saying that it is the best thing they ever used in their life no like if it would I could, if it would be, if somebody said that. I just would like to see more makeup from Nimia. It's been a while since they came out with the blushes. Like almost a year. Then NC Rain Cosmetics is coming out with a Flutter and Flourish eyeshadow palette. There are already videos up about these on YouTube. I've watched some videos. So one is kind of like muted and with a pop of bright green and a peach and then we have a bright palette with kind of like a deepening up darker shade these look pretty cute they're beautiful palettes i just don't feel like i need these like i was a little scared for a moment like am i gonna want these am i gonna like have to say no am i gonna buy these but i feel like the one is a little too bright for me with bright colors that i wouldn't really wear like i don't mind the bright palette but it kind of depends on the undertones and the other one is too muted for me like i like kind of like light and fresh shades not too bright not too muted not too kind of like muddy muted and i feel like i can quite easily pass on those like i would buy something like this if it were perfect i do like that they're coming out with a smaller format i feel like that's a good choice then then we have the new Natasha Denona Mini Rose Eyeshadow Palette. When I saw this revealed, I was kind of bored, a little disappointed. I feel like we have seen so many small rosy tone, pinky tone palettes. And this is just looking like nothing new. And it's $27. We've seen this. I feel like we've seen this. I can't get excited about it. I... I honestly can't really get excited about these small palettes by Natasha Denona anyway a few years ago I had two I had the mini glam and then I had the mini love I think that was the one didn't like both of those there was something about the formula and the way it ended up looking on the eyes I guess maybe it was also the undertones I just didn't feel like those were flattering on me and now I'm kind of like, I'm not buying Natasha Denona I have spent some money on the brand I wasn't really happy with it I can understand that I feel like if I would try it now I would understand more the hype I feel like I've gotten a little bit more flexible with the types of eyeshadow formulas that I like but yeah I'm not gonna buy this I just feel like we've seen this I'm bored um the reason I think that brands like Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona start out really interestingly is because they kind of like looking for their thing looking for what does well they are like newly started and inspired and they want to change the beauty industry i don't know what they want but later on when you've been doing something for a while you kind of notice maybe that rose tones are what sells well and they keep doing that and keep doing that i feel like they're kind of following the money i feel like this palette is gonna sell well and like she's just following the money then glamlight is launching a powder but we only have like videos and it's like going fast i don't know exactly what's going on but there's like a banana powder and then a strawberry powder and a translucent powder one of the powders is a strawberry shortcake collab i was almost like is this a non-collab launch but it's not they they managed to sneak in the collab for the pink powder so this is the new Bake and Set Powder, a delectable loose powder crafted with precision to effortlessly set and bake your makeup. Decadently fine meal texture, 35 grams. So we have translucent, chocolate cake, strawberry shortcake, banana cream pie, and cookie dough. So we have different shades. I'm not going to be buying this. Um, I was interested because I thought it was not a collab, but it is a collab. All right, this actually looks really interesting, but I don't know if it's like good interesting or bad interesting. So this is the Real Techniques Makeup Saver Blending Sponge, and it has a fingerprint. A fingerprint technology to mimic a makeup application done using fingers, reduces product absorption, and provides a natural skin-like finish, provides buildable streak-free coverage for a natural skin-like finish, gonna be $8.99 dollars 
I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. I don't, this, this might be very bad or it might work. I feel like this might be the type of thing that they just want to go viral. I feel like it actually being in the shape of a fingerprint and everything, it just, it, it's just meant to like stir up something in you like they wanted to go viral they want you to test it like it does it actually work like a finger i can already see the videos i'm not gonna buy this but i thought it was a very interesting choice essence and catrice season is upon us like we have seen the catrice update that we're gonna talk about next and once that is available i'm gonna be doing lip swatching videos i'm gonna be doing first impression full face videos and I feel like that's gonna take up a lot of my time and money. So I'm kind of like preparing myself mentally and monetarily for that. Let's see if I've missed anything that I want to talk about. Apparently not. Apparently not that much has been happening except for the Catrice update. I'm actually, I'm gonna eat something. I'm gonna change my battery and then I'm gonna come back because my stomach has been growling throughout this whole video. Probably haven't heard it, probably have edited it out, but it's too much. All right, can we just appreciate the lasting power of these uh, shine lipsticks I buy Flower Nose? Like, this is so good. Okay, there is a lot of new makeup coming from Catrice and it's too much for this video. I picked out the things that I thought looked the most interesting. If you wanna see everything, the YouTuber Like A Daisy In Spring. She did a full video on all products. It is in German, but I think you can get the gist. Like she has the photos, she has the pictures. Like you will get an idea of everything that's going on. But there's also so many like eyeliners, mascaras, like foundations, things like that. Here I just, I'm gonna show you the things that I'm probably, for sure, probably gonna pick up, but there's also gonna be a few more things that I'm gonna pick up. So first up, and this I'm very, very excited about, these are the Blush Affair Cream and Powder Palettes. So we have a duo, we have four shades, and then we have a duo that is a cream and a powder. We have kind of like a strawberry, we have kind of like a mauve a peachy, like, different shades here i think this looks really interesting and i would love to try this i have not liked the blush affair duo that had a highlighter and a blush i thought it looked too dry on my skin but this looks really cute i want to try it then we have a new shade of the gloss and glow tinted lip oil i really like this formula i don't like the deeper shades they turn too bright on me like it's ph reacting lip glow thing but the lighter one i really like and this one has a little bit of a shimmer in it i'm probably gonna try it i don't it doesn't really seem on like the photos of the models if like that it's gonna be a very like tinted pH reacting lip product, but I would like to try it. Then we have the, the Soft Peony Eyeshadow Palette. And this is kind of like pinky shades with some kind of like cool tone khaki shades. I am probably gonna pick this up because I wanna try another palette from this range because I already tried the kind of like cool tone taupey one and I actually quite like that one. So I'm probably gonna pick this up just to see if it's like similar quality what i think of it then we also have the grip to last eyeshadow primer and this seems to be kind of like that um like jelly grippy eyeshadow primer it's see-through it doesn't have any pigment to it and i don't really know what to think of this i don't really think like i don't really have much hope for these types of products i don't know i've never tried one but probably now that catrice has one i'm gonna try it just to see it could also work as kind of like a glitter primer maybe so i'm gonna pick it up but i was kind of hoping that it would be more of like a traditional eyeshadow primer and then i feel like this is kind of like a relaunch this is the catrice holiday skin four in one luminizer this is kind of like that bronzer drop jelly product base that you can use as a base or like you know, more pinpointed on the face they had this product already but they had it before it was popular and i feel like they're bringing it back to kind of like hop on the trend but the one that they used to have had coconut in it and it broke me out so i did kind of like it it was not a bad product but it broke me out so i decluttered it I'm gonna check the ingredients on this. If it does have coconut, I'm not gonna buy it because I am just gonna break out and never gonna use it. 
And I can already tell you that if you are not sensitive to coconut, then this is a pretty good one. It's pretty cute. Then we have the Aqua Splash Grip Primer. This is a hydrating grippy primer. I am using the e.l.f. one like basically every time I do my makeup now because I use it under my eyes and it just makes everything sit under my eyes so much better because it just kind of like dries up throughout the day. And now that doesn't really happen with the primer. I would love to try the Catrice version of that. I don't feel like I really need it because I already have this one and it's working well for me, but I would love to try it because it's probably affordable. Probably more affordable than the e.l.f. one. And yeah, I, I do know that a primer like this works for me. If it works as well as the e.l.f., I can just use it the e.l.f. and then after that, use it the Catrice. Then we have the Catrice Bright and Blur Loose Powder, and this is gonna be in the soft pink shade. I don't use the pink powder that i have from luna beauty like daily not a lot but i definitely feel like it has a place in my collection i don't feel like i really need this one because i have the luna beauty but i'll probably try it out because this is also for you it's not just for me it's also for you um i just want to let you know what's good from the new collection then we also have some new lip products we have the catrice care and colors lip balm in like seven different shades i think this looks really interesting. I want to see what this is about. I want to see how it kind of compares to their other lip products because we also have kind of like the click sticky pens from Catrice and those are also kind of balmy. They seem kind of balmy, but they're more on the thin side. So I want to see like how colorful is this? How pigmented is this? How hydrating is this? I do love a hydrating, slightly pigmented product. Probably I'm going to pick up the full range and do a lip swatching video because Catrice just does ranges of colors where I basically like all the colors and it's just a very helpful type of video. I feel like people are really enjoying those lip swatching videos. All right, then we also have the Catrice Endless Matte Liquid Lipstick. Here we also have like seven or ten shades. I'm not entirely sure, but don't these kind of look like a Luna Beauty? Like the black and the fade? I don't know if they were truly inspired by Luna Beauty. It's not like impossible that another brand has thought of this black fading packaging but it kind of reminded me of luna beauty i feel like they're gonna get rid of their old matte liquid lipsticks like the ones they used to have i ironically enough just bought to to see what the formula is like but then i can actually compare the old formula to the new formula if you like the old formula then you know if it's kind of like similar or different or how it compares so I think in the end it's gonna be a good thing but I, I thought it was kind of ironic the shades of this once again look really good i think i would love all the shades so probably gonna do another like full range lip swatch video i just really enjoy doing those as i said it's just i i, I do really like lip swatching videos it's just so helpful for you and for me because i feel like then it's so easy to pick out my favorites and then we also have this Catrice Soft Glaze Glow Balm in 010 Jelly Drippin'. I don't know if this is going to be pH reacting, but I thought it looked cute. I just screenshotted it because I thought it looked cute. I don't know if, for sure if I'm going to buy it. Like, It's going to kind of depend on when this is coming to Bougie Shop, when it's coming to Kreuzfeld, like what makes sense probably i'm gonna do like a full face first impressions first and then i'm gonna do like the lip swatching videos but i cannot always like get my hands on all the colors right away so we're gonna see kind of how that evolves and that's gonna be everything for these new launches let me know what you're most excited about what you want to see and then i'll see you in my next video bye, -bye.